Have you ever read The Stepford Wives? It's a very good science fiction novel. They made a film of it in 1975. The director cast his own wife in one of the leading roles. And, uh, yeah. The Stepford Wives is a 1972 novel by one of my favorite authors, the American Ira Levin. And some people say it's a satire on feminism, but I think it's more a satire on men. The book's conceit, the joke that is sprung at the end. So this is a spoiler, just in case you've never read the book or seen either of the two film versions, is that men are such beasts that if they could, they would murder their wives and replace them with lifelike robots, as long as those robots had hot bods. So the idea is, if you visit the town of Stepford in Connecticut and you walk down the street, all the women look like Playboy centerfolds or Sydney Sweeney or a young Salma Hayek. You get the picture. They're also really simpering and subservient and they flatter their husbands all the time. And so when this photographer, Joanna, moves to Stepford from New York with her family, she finds her husband spending more and more time at meetings with the other men because he's planning to bump her off and replace her with a lump of plastic. So the following story comes from Adventures in the Screen Trade a brilliant book by the Oscar-winning screenwriter William Goldman, who'd also done Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, Marathon Man, I mean, just a legend in the industry. The film is in preparation. It's been a troubled project. They've had problems finding a director, but they've settled on this British guy, Brian Forbes. He and Goldman are driving along one day, and Forbes suggests... Nanette Newman for the role of Carol Van Sant, one of the, the wives. Goldman says, I think she'll be very good, out of politeness, because Nanette is Brian's wife. But underneath his mind is in turmoil. He's thinking this is going to ruin the film, because Nanette Newman is an attractive woman. She's an English rose. What she's not is a playboy centrefold. You don't murder your wife and replace her with a robot and spend the rest of your life sleeping with a robot if it looks like Nanette Newman, frankly. The whole look of the film revolved around this casting decision because rather than wearing t-shirts and hot pants as they would in the original story, all the wives wear these long flowing dresses and big floppy hats. Then again, what was Goldman supposed to say to Forbes? Your wife's not attractive enough? He keeps repeating this mantra all through the book. Nobody knows anything. Nobody in filmmaking knows what is going to be popular, what's going to take off with the public. So in a situation like that, what could he say? There is a 2004 remake starring Nicole Kidman. That's not very good. But in late 2003, Levin, the novelist, wrote an article for the New York Times where he admitted that the costumes in the 1975 film set his teeth on edge. He writes, at a lawn party on a summer afternoon, the men are in jackets and ties, the women in floor-length dresses. In Stepford, the event would be a softball game and the men dressed like slobs. The women bringing the beer and burgers would be in hot pants and low-cut blouses or maybe wet t-shirts. It's a very entertaining film, it just doesn't have the satirical bite of the novel. Anyway, if you want to buy Adventures in the Screen Trade, I recommend it. I'll leave links in the description to the ebook. And uh, happy 90th birthday this month to Nanette Newman, very talented actress. If you enjoyed this video please consider liking and subscribing and I'll see you next time.